Uh, Charlie did what must be done. Preston has shares today. Um, Ian is going to say our opening prayer. Chase has doctrinal mastery. And I will say our closing prayer. As scriptures meant a real personal need for me yet, explain, market, answer, prepare it, manage it, assemble, and be gathered to Zion at Young Man's Day with the Young Women's tonight. Anything else going on? Yeah. Wrestling away. Any other sports going on today? I think so. I'm trying to find this song here. It looks like Okay, you want to introduce yourself? So, for music shares, I chose 108, The Lord is My Shepherd. Uh, do you have it there? No. Do you want to sing it? Not really. Oh, not a solo. Do you want us to sing it, or do you want to just have us listen to it? Or read the words, or what? I have it, we can just listen to it. Okay, why don't we connect that? Is that an iPhone? No. I don't think what kind of connection does that have? Ox. I don't think the ox we can get that to work very well up here. So let's. Do you want to take a stab at it? The Lord is my I got both of them open here. You probably do better than I would. Okay, so we'll. Listen. While she's playing, open your journals, or wherever you're writing answers to these questions. Answer, have scriptures met a real personal need for me yet? Oh, this is such a weird image. <coughs> you want to do top and bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Asher, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Wait, John 3, 16. Yes? That's for uh, the love of the world. That he is the one that us out. And other stuff? Anybody disagree? Yeah, other stuff. Yeah. Is it something else? Okay, Chase. Okay. Set the record straight. So it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
So you don't give full credit though, because he didn't. He didn't say the whole. He just said other first. stuff. So. Yeah. So I don't think that counts. It, I don't think. So. Yeah. No. no. He, is, he's, he gets half of a candy. Yeah. So this is cool because obviously Jesus like atoned for all our sins and came for us. But I also think it's cool that God, like, could see our potential and what we can do in this life. And he was like, yeah, we need to help them. So he sent Jesus to help us and so we can achieve what we need to do. Lovely interpretation. That's so good. God saw our potential, loved us enough to help us fulfill our potential. So he sent somebody to help us do that. And through Jesus, we can achieve our full potential. Great interpretation. Nice reading, Rabbi. Well done. Can we read verse 17 real quick? Do you still have it open? Uh, yeah, it? I have it. Okay. Read verse 17, too. This kind of goes along with that. Okay. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might... The world through him might be saved. Okay. Keep wanting to come back to the concept that Jesus and God and the gospel is not here to condemn us, to make us to feel bad or ashamed. It's here to save us, to help us. And what is salvation according to Chase? Achieving your full potential. Not just in this life, but in the eternities. And that, what does that look like? What does our potential look like? How does a baby know what their potential looks like? All the grown-ups around them, right? All the people bigger than them. So our potential is to become like our heavenly parents, male and female. Do what they do, live how they live, have the powers they have, have the love that they have, have the knowledge they have, all that. Yeah? If you feel condemned by the gospel, by Jesus, then something's gone wrong. Condemned is like cursed, damned, right? So we got to get our thinking straight. The gospel is good news. It's not bad news. <laughs> it's not a burden. It's a gift. It's an escape. It's not a hole to fall into or a trap to deal with, a burden to just deal with. It's, it's, the, it's the escape from the burden. It's sometimes hard to understand that very well. Any comments on that concept? Okay, Preston. For personal um, yeah. recently I invited one of my best friends to go to um, uh, it's, um, activities. Oh, we call them mutual. Yeah. yeah, young men's. Yeah, I totally just forgot that. That's okay. <laughs> um, I invited him to mutual, and he seemed to have some fun, even though it was just planning activities. And um, at first, we're kind of like, I don't know if I was going to invite him, and um, but I think like once you actually invite them, it's a lot more like easier than you thought it would be. Mm. And yeah, I hope he's gonna. I think he's gonna come today too. So, I know. What's your friend's name? Uh, Joe Lamb. Okay, he's been there before, right? Yeah, yeah, cool. Anybody else know Joe from school or right on? So, keep the fellowshipping going, right? Yeah, awesome. Why, <laughs> Why are you inviting him? Um, that's an act of faith, motivated by something. What are, what are you doing this for, I Preston? Know. I just think that we're like, we're good friends, and I guess uh, it's a way of helping him. Because he's kind of like, I guess he calls himself agnostic, where he believes in God, but he doesn't believe like in a religion. Yes. So. Okay. It's no wonder. I mean, I... I think it's for some people it's hard to believe in a religion because there are so many and it can be so confusing. So that's understandable. Um,
Can we talk for a second about why it seems so difficult until you actually do it? And then it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad after all. What is it coming up to that invitation that feels like it's going to be tricky or difficult or, or whatever? For me, it wasn't really like Joe. I think that he's, he's really nice. He'll like have fun in any situation almost. So it's more of like um, his parents because his parents are pretty strict on him. And um, I feel like if I invited him, then his parents might not like me and might stop letting us hang out. Which oh. Is most of my concern. Yeah. All right. Has anybody else had that same concern? You've thought, you've had the thought, oh, I could invite this person to come to this activity. I could share the Book of Mormon with this person. I could offer some gospel insight that I have with this person to help them. I could share some of my faith. But then the concern is getting up to that, oh no, what if, what if they don't like me because of that, right? What if his parents then think, oh no, they're trying to, you know, convert him or whatever. And then that goes badly for your friendship. Stop letting you hang out. Maybe else have the same, feel like they come up against sort of that same concern at times. Yeah. As you've pushed through that concern, as Preston has done, and some of you have done, I know you've shared the gospel with some of your friends and teachers. What do you learn about that obstacle? What you thought was a problem, what did you discover as you pushed through it to the invitation? What's that? It's a what if. Okay, it's a what if. Mm -hmm. And then what evidence do you get as you go forward? And it no longer is just like a theory of they might reject it and it might go badly. What normally happens? What have you learned in your own experience? Like what Preston learned. It wasn't as bad as you thought it might be, right? Has anybody shared the gospel and it's actually gone really bad? That was, that they, they, they were mad at me. They didn't ever want to talk to me again. Their parents were mad at me. Uh, and you got the message, I should not share the gospel with people because it goes poorly. Has anybody walked away from a gospel sharing experience with that data? Right? Isn't that a powerful statement? No hands went up. Now, how many of you have shared the gospel and it went neutral or positive? Raise your hands. Okay. So what is that? That's almost 100%. What does that prove to us in the laboratory of life? We're going to come up against that obstacle. We think about sharing the gospel, and then the second thought is, oh, but what if? That will always come. You'll always be met. You think the positive, and then whoosh, quickly comes in the lie, the doubt. You have to go with the first one because you know from evidence from your own life that that is trying to keep you from doing a good thing. This happens all the time. We have a thought to do a good thing. We get an impression from the spirit to do something. And then immediately comes a doubt, a reason to not do it. Have you experienced that? We got to watch out for that second thought. When it comes to doing good things, don't give it a second thought. Don't entertain that second thought that comes right after the first one. The what if questions that Jake mentioned, the, the fear that, oh, it might not go well. Don't give those any attention when it comes to doing a good thing. That's how, that's how spiritual impressions work. You'll get a good idea and then the devil knows it and he'll come in with another idea. To try to keep you from doing it. Way to go, Preston. Any comments about that? I hope that's helpful for some of you who are interested in doing more good. Okay. 
Uh, turn to your neighbor and answer this question. Have you in your life experienced the scriptures actually meeting a personal need of yours? Not just, okay, I'm reading to read. But where you went in here and you're like, I'm looking for something. I'm trying to find information or comfort or solutions. And have you had that experience yet? And if you haven't, that's okay. That's why I said yet. Because we're still building, still working on building that database of experiences. But I want you to share and talk about that a little bit with your neighbor. Okay? So, Jaron and Kaylee, start here and then go down the line. It'll be Ian and Seth, Ivy and Charlie, you guys, okay, Jake and James there, Amina, Holly, Jacob and Jacob, and I will talk to you, Preston. Okay, just take a second, share that with your neighbor, each of you. Talk about, if you can think of an experience. There's no time to do anything in here, it feels like. Um, okay. I like press. I'll share Preston's answer, and then I'll ask a couple of you to share. Um, okay. So Preston said that at FSY he was he had to kind of find something to share. And so he was going through the Doctrine and Covenants and came across a scripture that he still remembers the reference for because the scripture meant something personal to him about how God will answer our prayers in his own time, in his own way. Um, and for him, that became like a personal thing. Um, who would like to share? Who has something in mind that they can offer? when you, the scriptures have meant something to you personally, and it's not just been a matter of routine or have to read. Jake? Well, I, kinda, I bring this up because it was kind of significant yesterday. Mm -hmm. I have a friend, like, really good friends with all through my childhood and stuff like that. We live in the same neighborhood. Um, and the summer he passed away. And um, when I moved here, you know, we kind of like, you know, it was less, less and less like friendship. Or kind of like you know, we're an hour and a half away from each other, mm -hmm. and um, it was his birthday yesterday, and so um, I, that just kind of reminded me of it today because there's a scripture on the FSY because it happened like only a couple weeks before FSY, 
and um, the scripture just like it gave me this thought in my head and it was like everything's fine you know can I just give you confirmation about what happened and everything like that so. and did you find information in the scriptures that gave yeah. you that comfort awesome so you went into the scriptures looking for confirmation or comfort that it was all right yeah and you found it Anybody else? All right. I think the, the point I want to make, well, <laughs> I want to teach you what, how we got the scriptures. We started that discussion yesterday a little bit so that you know the value of what what we have here. It wasn't always just in a book like this that you get for free from your parents when you get baptized or something. Okay, this information, the scriptures, are a result of a tremendous amount of effort, of human effort and sacrifice. Even people giving their lives, being murder because they're trying to get this information to the public in a way they could access it and uh, of God's management and movement of what's going on to preserve the records uh, some of you I know don't care that much about history it's like I don't care it's just a book they're just words I have a friend who grew up in the church and served a mission now doesn't believe and he says they're just it's just old guys talking it's just old guys talking and and i i mean it is old guys talking mostly <laughs> but it's not just it's not just a book it's not just information it's not just history there's a lot more to it than that um, so because we just hardly have any time, um, I don't know if I want to get back into that much, but what I want to ask you is how do scriptures become meaningful? What does it take for it to transition from kind of boring, confusing, words and stories about people I don't know who are dead a long time ago and something that becomes actually useful or meaningful what does it take to go from that place to to that place yeah I feel like obviously it takes work, but it's like personal work that you have to like you have to put your own time and effort into it like family scripture study is like everyone says it's like family scripture study and then everyone's always like but you also have to do it yourself like i feel like it's said a lot but it's also true mm -hmm. so, like you have to be able to do it yourself mm -hmm. to get the meaning mm -hmm. okay cool you said you said the word work and i, I like that personal effort and time good Bridget. i think it's just getting your mind right because like mm -hmm. I don't know when we're in family scripture study and I know I have to do like a bunch of other things after that or like I want to like go fast because I have things yeah. to do. It's like I don't really get anything out of it. But like when I sit down and I do it myself and I'm like actually looking, not just going through the motions, it's it's way better. What? How is it better? I, so it's like the, I'm like uh, I'm like trying to like apply the scriptures to my life and not just like read it and get it done. Okay. Yeah. There's a there's a matter of just like putting in the time because I have to read to get the credit. So I'm going to put in my 10 minutes. I'm going to read through this and I'm, and I don't get anything out of it. Right. It's like, you just spent that time and you can't even remember a single thing that you even read. <laughs> I just read a whole page. I don't even know what it was. And sometimes that's because the language is hard, but what, what Bridget and Chase are saying is when you put your own choice to get in there for the right reason, not just to check off 
the, the reading for the day, right? Or so that your parents will get off your back about, did you read? Yes, I read. Okay, enough said. But when you go into them with real intent, then things change. You actually get something. You actually get some nourishment, some spiritual nourishment. But Chase used the word work. And it's not just time, which it is time. And that's hard to give time when you're busy or when you're not that interested in it. We all give a lot of time to lots of things, right? We all give 24 hours a day, I guess, except when we're sleeping. So let's say 16 hours a day or so. We all give time, but sometimes what we choose to give our time to and our attention to compared to what is useful, I mean, we have to weigh the priorities and the benefits. And I want to just hold out the offer to you and the promise that when you do choose with real intent to get into these words, I know it's boring, Jacob. It's okay, buddy. Stick with it. <laughs> when you do choose to get into it with real intent, that's when you invite God into the relationship that you're having with the scriptures. That's when they become meaningful. They become real. Otherwise, it's just words. But I promise you that the second you give any, even like 5% of real intent, you're going to get something back out of that. God will reward you with what you need, the way we've heard some a few testimonies about today. Okay? I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ready. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather here in Seminary today to learn from Brother James. Please help us to be able to do that. It's so far for us to be God a good rest of our day to be well in our past. We will see you soon. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.